Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us once again. We'll be speaking with Mary Beth Cicero, CEO and founder of Three Daughters. She's joining us to talk about the development of the company's lead product candidate, which is a frameless, self-assembling IUD. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Mary Beth Cicero. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Neil. Uh, Tell us a a bit about yourself and more about Three Daughters and your work in the, the women's health arena. Well, a little bit about me. I've spent my entire career in the pharmaceutical biotech industry, primarily on the marketing and business development side. Um, prior to getting involved with Three Daughters, I worked for a – I had my own consulting firm where I worked with over 100 clients. A lot of the work that I've done over the years has been in women's health, which is a passion and a love, and I've realized – and the work that I've done, that there just isn't enough innovation. And that's how I got involved with Three Daughters. We have a technology for targeted delivery into the uterus, and our first product is a novel IUD for contraception. Is this something vastly different from the current standard of care? It actually is, Neil. Um, all of the current IUDs in the U.S. are have a T-shaped, plastic frame that have arms and dangling strings needed for removal and it's a rigid frame and this has been around for over 40 years and it causes significant insertion and actually retrieval pain and it's one of the things that we want to address with our technology because we have a a frameless platform it's actually three small magnetic elliptical shapes that are inserted individually into the uterus and form into this very stable triangle. And in this way, it conforms to a woman's body and adapts to the uterine environment. We're expecting it to basically float gently in the uterus, unlike the current T-shape, which needs specific placement. And we, together with our inserter and retriever system, which is called a glider, will be eliminating at least three of the pain points that occur during IUD insertion of the current T-shape. You mentioned that you had extensive uh, marketing experience as well. Based on your knowledge of the current IUD market, how do you see this development progressing as far as being accepted and um, really changing the game? Well, I like that you use those words, Neil, because we basically believe it's a game changer and our first goal out of the box is to disrupt this market and move it from this T-shaped frame to a frameless technology. The market in the U.S. is about $1.5 billion now, and it hasn't really had any innovation since 2016 when the last IUD was launched here that just had a lower dose of progestin. So there hasn't been any major innovation, and women really get scared away from selecting IUDs. And the great thing about IUDs is they're very effective, greater than 99%. They can be left in place, in some cases, up to 10 years. They've been around a long time, so there's a history of relative safety. And reversible. And once they're in, they're in. They don't require much on the part of the patient. But younger women really get scared from hearing about the insertion pain. There's videos on TikTok that get, believe it or not, 1.4 billion views. And this scares women away. Mm -hmm. And with our IUD, we expect it to be, because we are eliminating those pain points, to be less painful and really address one of the major barriers to IUD adoption. Now, can your IUD be left in for that long a period of time that you mentioned that other uh, IUDs can be left in? Well, usually when IUDs are launched, they're launched with the safety data, so that's our initial proposal to the FDA. Mm -hmm. What happens is as you gather additional data, you can extend the amount of time that can be left in. You mentioned younger women in a, in a previous statement. Is this device going to be indicated for anyone of childbearing age? Well, that's a very good question. And really, uh, IUDs used to be reserved for women after they had children, but the age has moved down. Even the Academy, American Academy 
we have pediatrics uh, men along with ACOG from age 15 on, 15 to 19 age group, and the 20 to 24 for use of IUDs, again, because we think they're scared away from this insertion pain. Mm -hmm. And those are the women that have the greatest number of unintended pregnancies and 42% abortion. Mm -hmm. So it's critical at this juncture, especially in the U.S., that women have more contraceptive options and have efficacious contraceptive options. This is your lead product, your your first product. What's next for Three Daughters, both clinically and operationally? Well, we think that our technology and ingredients to the uterus, our first product will have copper, which is a spermicide for a second API or active pharmaceutical ingredient that we can put on these little ellipses in the same fashion as we do with the copper and in that way deliver uterus for other conditions that occur within the uterus that don't have a lot of good therapeutic options now, whether that's Mm -hmm. fibroids, certain forms of endometriosis, or even chemotherapy. But we're in the very early development stages. How do you plan to fund product development, and what do you feel most optimistic about in this product development? And then give us a website where we can learn more. Well, I obviously feel very... Um, optimistic about the product. And the reason why is because we have a very straightforward regulatory and clinical pathway. There aren't really questions around the efficacy of the copper. It's a proven spermicide. And we know it's a 505 B2 pathway with the FDA, which makes it a little easier because we can rely on their findings of safety and efficacy. Uh, All the contraceptive trials require the same 10,000 patient cycles, so we know what needs to be done. We have a very experienced team and a world-class scientific advisory board with every major thought leader in this area. So that's really a reason to be very optimistic. And as far as the funding, we started the company with grant funding. And from that, we raised a pre-seed that was oversubscribed, and we have since added to that pre-seed, and we're now raising a seed round of $2 million where we have $1.25 committed. We're basically looking for another half million to be part of that seed. And at the same time, we're going to meet, and that seed will fund our IND filing next year. From there, we're moving right into phase one trials, and we're looking for a series A of $10 million. And with that $10 million, we'll be able to complete our phase one trial, and then we're looking for a corporate partner to help us commercialize for the U.S. market. Well, I'm, I'm wishing you the best of luck, and I'm, I'm sure that things will go your way, and hopefully you'll come back and uh, give us some more information and tell us how the product is uh, doing once it's released. And um, give us a website now where our listeners can learn much more about Three Daughters. Well, thank you very much, Neil. Our website is three, the number three, daughtershealth.com. Great. Well, I appreciate your time. As I said, um, Mary Beth Cicero, thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate your graciousness. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Mary Beth Cicero. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au, also at Anchor Spotify, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 